Hi, I'm Mackenzie Johnson, aspiring director and writer, and this is my show. Hi. I apologise if I sound nasally or anything. I just sneezed and I haven't quite recovered. I've been wondering to myself, besides the fact that, you know, my clothes are weird and stuff, I've been wondering, how many Sherlock Holmes have there been in the entire universe of Sherlock Holmes? And I already started counting to myself. There's... <laughs> Benedict. Arguably the most recent, considering adaptations. And then there's obviously Robert Downey Jr., who's the latest adaptation. But what about all the other ones from like the 60s or the 40s or even the 20s, if there were? I kind of want to delve into the realm of Sherlock Holmes and decide once and for all who is the best Sherlock Holmes, in my own opinion. I also want to hear from you. Who were all the Sherlocks? And how exactly did they? portray Sherlock, because there is not one definitive portrayal of Sherlock Holmes, except for in the books themselves. Who's closest to that? And are they even good? Hi again. I'm at my computer this time. I decided to go up onto Google because Google has the definitive answer to every question ever posed in the entire universe. Pretty sure aliens actually use Google, but that's beside the point. I decided to go to the only place that's reliable for anything but really relevant information, and that is Wikipedia. Apparently the only thing Wikipedia is correct about is anything that has nothing to do with anything you would do a school report on. Now, I've gotten a list of all the Sherlock Holmes in films, television, stage, or radio, which is good. I've got Hans Albers, your queen... De Almeida? I'm sorry, I'm very bad at this. John Barrymore, Keith Baxter, Jeremy Brett, which I've heard of, John Cleese. I didn't know he played with Sherlock Holmes. Wow, that's weird. Peter Lawford, Christopher Lee. That is amazing. I'm going to take like the biggest ones, mind you. The biggest names that I know, and I'm going to put them all together, like the definitive Sherlock Holmes. John Neville. Leonard Nimoy. Oh, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, Ellie Norwood. I'm sorry. Clinton Christopher Plummer. I love that man. Well, Ian Richardson, Nicholas Rowe, Richard Roxburgh. That's amazing. Perhaps the greatest interpretation of Sherlock Holmes to date is Basil Rathbone. Basil played Sherlock in many, many different settings in many different films and television shows. There are many things I love about Basil, but there are many things also that I hate, hate, hate about this man. The things I love about him are the fact that he could actually play the violin. And he was the first Sherlock Holmes to actually be Sherlock Holmes. He made the role sort of in itself. He built it. He made the standard that others strive to be as playing Sherlock Holmes. However, there are a few things that I also dislike about his Sherlock Holmes interpretation as well. <sighs> Where do I start? His Watson was far too dumb. He was far too old for the role, even though Sherlock is considered to be quite, you know, at least beyond his twenties in the stories. He's not exactly as old as Basil made him out to be. And in addition, most of the things that he was in were played for political purposes, which sort of took away from the story. All in all, Basil is a good Sherlock Holmes, but maybe not necessarily the best, though his standard is the standard that many people follow, and he's idolised for what he did to Sherlock Holmes. I have to say, he's not necessarily my favourite. How about this next Holmes, Jeremy Brett? 
Jemmy Brett not only looks like the original description of Sherlock Holmes, but he's also credited with being the one who was closest to the actual written material. It's said that he was often worried sick about whether or not things would be interpreted correctly as according to the books. So he had a file with him at all times explaining Sherlock Holmes's mannerisms called the Baker Street file. There are certain things that I dislike about him, but I mostly what I mostly like about him is his effort at trying to get Sherlock Holmes exactly the way he was in the books while ma still making it titillating to watch. However, with all good things, must also come a few bad things as well. While the Holmes interpretation was good in his series, his Watson interpretation was bad. He had two Watsons, and continuity is something Sherlock Holmes fans simply die for. So that's already a bad, bad note in my book. Also, in addition, he was... He looked like Sherlock Holmes, he really did. But the way he acted and his facial expressions sort of sort of spun him off really as a villain. He didn't look quite likable like the Sherlock Holmes were accustomed to. While Sherlock isn't supposed to look like a cuddly daddy bear or anything, he's at least supposed to look like someone you can remotely trust. Therefore, yes, while Jeremy Brett is good, he's not necessarily my favourite either. This is it. The cream of the crop. The final countdown. Two Sherlock Holmes remain, but only one is my favourite. And the two Sherlock's that I have chosen for the finalists in my favourite list, even though this really isn't a competition, are Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch. And I instantaneously know what you're thinking. How on earth could you possibly choose between the most modern Sherlock Holmes adaptations? That's a little bit, I don't know, biased to your own generation, isn't it? And the answer is, maybe, maybe not. I really did look over all the other Sherlock Holmes. I've seen most of the other movies. I've looked at the other adaptations, and I've given them exceptional consideration. The first one I'm going to be talking about is Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict's modern adaptation of Sherlock Holmes separates him from the rest, and that's good, good, good in my book. He's very unique for that point. In addition, his Watson is none other than Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman is so amazing. <laughs> I love him so much. He's a great, great Watson. He simulates his disbelief at Sherlock's findings with his mind, while in addition being the lovable character we all know, and in addition making him come out as, I don't know, an intelligent person? Because that's certainly something most Watsons have been lacking, thanks to cinema's need for that goofy, silly sidekick no one can take seriously. Sherlock is in the show so much like Sherlock Holmes, though he's a little more analytical, he is also a little funny. Benedict Cumberbatch has some funny, funny scenes that you must admit really, really do make you laugh, and then other times you're simply wowed by his methods of deduction. Though it's not really deduction, it's a different kind of science entirely, but I'm not going to be nitpicky. This is Sherlock we're talking about. The other Sherlock candidate, the final candidate that I have not mentioned yet except in passing, is Robert Downey Jr. Yes, we all know he's American. And yes, we all know his accent is fake. It's quite flat. But still, honestly, the way he does things is pretty, pretty good. Keeping Sherlock close to his kickboxing roots while at the same time being an analytical man is a really, really good point for me. And making him the Sherlock that they made him was also a pretty good choice. And Jude Law, I'm sorry, but the two final Watsons of my final choices are both amazing. Jude Law and Martin Freeman. Where can you go wrong? Sherlock is nothing without his Watson bottom line. And the bottom line is, it's a really, really good Watson. So far, the movies have been well reviewed. Thank you so much, Guy Ritchie. And so far... He's been doing pretty well in that series. I have reached my conclusion. And my Sherlock of choice is... Pause for effect. Benedict Cumberbatch. Not only is he originally from England, which is very, very helpful, but also his modern Sherlock Holmes is applicable to everyday life. 
You can easily tell that these things weren't just pulled up from out of nowhere or out of just the stories, and they're also relative to the original stories. A study in pink is also almost synonymous to a study in scarlet. So, that is my final choice. I really have to go pressing engagements, but I wanted to make this for you. Now, my name is obviously Mackenzie Johnson, as you've heard it thousands of times before, and you will hear it thousands of times again. And I say, have a good night. I'll see you later. Oh, he's all me, me, me. <laughs> oh, Watson, this is exceptional. Oh. If I had a Sherlock Holmes, it would so be applicable.